Glory for Christ forevermore. Glory for Christ forevermore. Glory for Christ forevermore. We are the prophet Jeremiah, Jesus, Ebenezer, Zion, the city of the living God. This is the Christ and the Antichrist, chapter 28, titled Abraham and his spiritual seed. Verse 1. We have talked about the natural descendants of Abraham, the Hebrew Jews. Now we will talk about the spiritual seed of Abraham, the Christ and his wife. The story of the Israelites began with Abraham in about 800 BC, but it was only with the prophet Moses in the book of Exodus, in the word of Papa God, that the first emerged with their identity. Abraham descended from Shem, who was Noah's son, Genesis 10:1. Shem's descendants are known as the Semites. Today, the Semites are the people of the Middle East and Northern Africa. They originally spoke their own language, languages, which were Hebrew, Aramic, Akkadian, Arabic, and Ethiopian. When Abraham was called by Papa God, when Abraham was called by Papa God. The Middle Bronze Age was underway. At the same time, the northern part of Britain was still in the food vessel culture. Abraham was referred to as a Hebrew and later his descendants became known as the Israelites and then as the Jews. In the book of Genesis 12, 1, Papa God spoke to Abraham and said to him, as we have previously seen, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Papa God also told him on verse 2 to 3 of the same chapter, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all the people on earth will be blessed through you. This is the promise of Papa God to Abraham, Isaac, Israel, and their seed. And they represent all the blessings of Papa God to those who believe the testimony of the word of Papa God, which was given by his son. The number seven represents Papa God's totality. Hence, the promises of Papa God to Abraham and his seed are seven. The pastor of pastors. Brackets, Revelation 14, 6, put it this way, in one of his many revelations from the Spirit of the Christ, seven in biblical palace, palance, symbolizes perfection, fullness, abundance, and wholeness. Thus, seven spirits of God in the Bible implies a completeness or fullness of the Holy Spirit. In the book of our revelations from chapter 15, it talks about the seven angels, brackets, the millennium overcomers of death with seven last plagues. Also in Revelation 16, it talks about the seven bowls of God's rocks. Thus, the complete move of Papa God or his acts are always symbolized with and by the number seven. Again, this is the reason why Papa God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, Israel and their seed are seven. We have previously touched on how one can become the seed of Abraham. How be we will look at it again from a different angle. We're looking at one at how one becomes the spiritual seed of Abraham so that they can receive all these wonderful blessings of Abraham. The great man of God, Abraham, had his sons when he was very old. In Genesis 16, the writer, Eda Moses, talked about how Sarah, Abraham's wife, persuaded Abraham to sleep with their Egyptian maid, Hagar, in order that she may produce for them an heir. Again, the book of Genesis 16 says, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, 
go in unto my maid it may be that I may obtain children by her and Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah Genesis 16 1 to 2 however when Hagar the maid servant of Abraham and his wife found out she was pregnant she began to despise Sarah Sarah retaliated by mistreating her so she ran away from them but the Holy Spirit found her and told her go back to Sarah and he said to her I will so increase your descendants that they would be too much to count the Holy Spirit also told her you are now with a child and you will have a son you shall name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard of your misery he will be a wild donkey of a man his hand brackets Muhammad will be against brackets enemy of everyone and everyone's hand against him and he will live in hostility towards all his brothers please take note that in the above revelation from the word of Papa God it said that an angel was the one who ministered to Hagar and told her those words but this is not true because it is only Papa God who has such power and ability to say and carry out such promises. This is how we know it was not an angel but the Holy Spirit himself. You have to understand that the people of the Old Testament didn't know the spirit and the spiritual world as we do today. To them, the Holy Spirit was an angel sent by Papa God. But the Holy Spirit is not an angel, but the angel of God's presence. We have a testimony of this from the book of Isaiah the prophet in chapter 63 verses 9 to 10. There the prophet said, in all their affliction, there refers to Israel, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bore them and carried them all the days of old but they rebelled and vexed his holy spirit therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them and the above from the book of isaiah the prophet the holy spirit was called the angel of papa god's presence this angel of god's presence is none other than the same angel that ministered to hagar and many other righteous men in the Old Testament. We will discuss in detail who and what the Holy Spirit is in the coming chapters. So Ishmael was Abraham's first son through their Egyptian maid. When Abraham was 99 years old, the word of Papa God made a covenant with him. The word of Papa God also confirmed the seven promises he had earlier given to him from verse 7 of genesis chapter 17 papa god said to abraham that he would establish an everlasting covenant with him to be his god and the god of his descendants that were to come after him verse in verse 15 papa god promised to bless sarah abraham's wife and give her a son papa god also promised to make her the mother of nations kings of peoples were also to come from her however abraham wanted Ishmael to be part of Papa God's blessing. Because of his love for Ishmael, Abraham pleaded with Papa God for him. If only Ishmael might live under your blessing, Abraham said to Papa God. It's obvious from Abraham's request to Papa God that he loved his son Ishmael and wanted him to be a part of his, of his inheritance. However, it was not Papa God's plan for Abraham to have Ishmael. If only they waited and trusted God's word, Abraham would not have been in the position he found himself in, pleading for his son Ishmael. We need to understand the position they were in. They were old and rich and most importantly, they needed an heir to inherit their substance. I, for one, would have done the same if I was in their shoes, promise or no promise. So whilst Abraham looked for an heir in Egypt, he forgot about Papa God's word to him which told him that all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him and his seed. Papa God eventually replied to Abraham after he pleaded with him to include Ishmael in his everlasting covenant and said to him, Your wife Sarah would give you a son and you would call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him 
as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, with whom Sarah will bear you this time next year. Again, it's quite obvious that Abraham wanted Ishmael to be a part of God's everlasting covenant. But Papa, God had his own plans from the foundation of the world. Ishmael typifies the father of the flesh and Isaac, the father of the spirit. So Papa, God chose Isaac and his descendants instead of Ishmael and his to establish his everlasting covenant. Many years later, in Genesis 21, 9-13, Sarah told Abraham to get rid of their maid servant Hagar after she caught him mocking Isaac. Abraham once again was distressed by Sarah's command to get rid of the slave woman and her son. However, Papa God comforted him and told him not to worry about the slave woman and her son Ishmael, but instead to listen to whatever Sarah says, because it's through Sarah and her son Isaac that his seed was to be reckoned. After this event, Abraham got rid of the maid servant and her son Ishmael. While they were at the point of death, the angel of Papa God's spirit called from the first heaven to Hagar and said to her, what is this? What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. As we have just seen, although Abraham had two sons at this time, Papa, God and his spirit kept emphasizing over and over again that his everlasting covenant is going to be true Isaac and his descendants and not Ishmael and his. Howbeit, Papa, God still promised to bless Ishmael and make him the rulers of 12 tribes, brackets, the master of the flesh, because he came from Abraham's flesh. When Papa, God tested Abraham's faith in Genesis 22 2, he told him to take his son, his only son, whom he loved, and to go and sacrifice him as burnt offering to him. In actual fact, Ishmael and his mom had been sent away at this time by Abraham and his wife. But in Papa, God's eyes, spiritual eyes, remember, God is the spirit. Abraham had only one son. This is why he only recognized Isaac as the only son of Abraham. Also, in verse 12 of the same chapter, when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, as he had been instructed. The Holy Ghost called to him from the first heaven and told him not to lay hands on Isaac. And that now he knows truly that Abraham is fearful of God because he had not withheld from God his only son. In verse 15, the Holy Spirit called again from the first heaven and says, said, he swears by himself and declares that because Abraham had done this and had not withheld his son, his only son, he would surely bless him. And in verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord went on to say that through Abraham's son, Isaac, all nations of the earth will be blessed because he had obeyed him. Abraham went on to marry another wife. Her name was Kentura. She had six kids for him. And their names are Zimran, Joksham, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. In total, Abraham had eight sons. The reality, however, is that it was only Isaac that was chosen by Papa God from all of them to carry out his everlasting plan for Papa God. This is why the word of Papa God says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 28 to 31. Now you brothers, Christ, Christians, you know, the Christian is Christ. So I was put when I write Christ, Christ, Christ. I was put Christ and dash ants. These are calling Christians. We call it Christ. The body of Christ is one with Christ. Anyway, that's another revelation. This is why the word of Papa God said in Galatians 4:28 to 31. Now you brothers, 
like Isaac, are children of promise. At that time, the son, bracket Ishmael, born in the ordinary way, persecuted the son Isaac, born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now, but what does the scripture say in the book of Genesis? Get rid of the slave woman, Hagar, and her son Ishmael, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers, we are not the children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. So the scriptures clearly states that the inheritance of Papa God was handed down to Isaac and his descendants, and not to Ishmael and Abraham's other sons. It is also written in the book of Genesis chapter 14 verse 14. The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot his nephew had departed from him, lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you unto your offspring forever. Papa, God is a spirit. So when he told Abraham to look, he was not asking Abraham to look with the optical eyes. And Abraham understood this. So he looked with his spiritual eyes and saw the whole world of Papa God's creation. And this is what God gave to him and his seed as an everlasting possession. This inheritance is a spiritual counterpart to what the Israelites received when they came out of slavery in Egypt. In other words, the land of Israel is the everlasting inheritance for Isaac and Israel, whilst the new heavens and the new earth, including Israel and his land, is the everlasting inheritance for the spiritual seed of Abraham. This is why when Israel was dying, he gave only Joseph the birthright, brackets, double portion, of the first son, even though he, Israel, received this blessing from his father Isaac. In Genesis 27, we have the testimony of Isaac, handing over the blessings of the heavens and of the earth to Israel his son. From verse 26 of Genesis 27, he says, And his, bracket, Isaac's father said unto him, Israel, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son, Esau, bow down to the curse to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So Israel received the dew of the heavens and the earth from his father as his inheritance. This he in turn gave only to Joseph. This lets us know that Joseph in the Old Testament was a type of the Christ and his wife. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 to 9, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat, coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably, peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheep in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream. <laughs> and told it his brethren. And said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obe obeisance, obe obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. As we have just seen above, Joseph's blessings surpassed that of his brothers. So even though Israel and his sons received the blessing of Abraham, 
they only had its physical counterpart as opposed to its trueness, which is the heavens and the earth. But, but God also said to the priest, to the priest Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 to 20, that Abraham is the possessor of the heavens and the earth, and Melchizedek, Melchizedek king of Salaam, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the highest God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, highest God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the highest God which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Thus, Abraham is the possessor of the heavens and the earth, and this is the inheritance Papa God gave to him and his spiritual seed. Going back to Joseph's dreams, the Bible said in the first dream that Joseph had, that his brother's chief, chief made obe obedience to his. Joseph's brothers understood the significance of that dream. Thus, they asked him if he was going to have dominion over them. In the second dream Joseph had, his father asked him, Shall I and thy mother and all your brothers come and bow down to you? This lets us know that Joseph's blessing the birthright of the first son was on a different level altogether to the blessings his brothers and his sons received from Israel. Even so, all of them, Israel and his sons, were made to bow down to Joseph as we see many years later in the book of Genesis 43, 49. Even Israel's blessings had to bow down to Joseph's as we saw in Joseph's dream. Question one my ask is why was this so the answer lies in the fact that the christ and the son of man is the spiritual son of joseph as the chief shepherd of god's flock we are also the spiritual son of judah another of another son of israel another question how did the christ become the spiritual son of joseph and judah answer because it was only joseph along with his seed that received the inheritance of the birthright from Israel. The Bible says in the first Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 1. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defied his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel. And the gene gene genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. So Reuben who was the first son of Israel, did not receive the birthright because he was given to Joseph and his seed. This is correct, but as we have previously quoted, the Old Testament church is a type and the shadow of the New Testament. So the sons of Joseph in the New Testament is none other than the Christ and his body, the church. The Bible went on to say in verse 2 of 1 Chronicles, Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, the Christ. But the birthright was Joseph's. So Joseph and his seed, the Christ and his body, received the inheritance of the firstborn, while Judah received the kingship. We have a testimony of this from the book of Genesis in chapter 48. It says, And it came to pass after these things, after Israel and his sons came to serve Joseph and the Pharaoh in Egypt, that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father, bracket, Israel, is sick, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and, e and Ephraim, and one told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And one told, And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me and loose in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give thee. I will give this land to thy seed after you for an everlasting possession. And now, thy two sons, Abraham and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine, as Reuben and Simon, and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy and issue, which thou beget, 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 begettest after them, shall be thine. And shall be called after the name of the brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan, in the way when yet 
there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God had given me in this place. And he said, 